Let's begin right at the beginning here. Uh, the president tweeting moments ago, the only problem is the Fed. Uh, no end in sight to the criticism from the president, it seems. What do you make of it? Well, I just think this is, this is outrageous, uh, that, uh, that the problems, the, the economy's been doing very well. The Fed has really done its job. We're sitting in a situation where the economy has come back to actually, if anything, more than full employment. Uh, inflation is, is uh, very close to where the Fed wants it to be. Uh, the Fed's had a steady hand. So the Fed is really not the problem here. Uh, that uh, the, the problem is just a lot of uncertainty about a whole bunch of issues that really are completely out of the Fed's control. And unfortunately, many of these are coming from the president. Uh, the issue of a trade war, hugely important because it can interfere with global supply chains. Uh, some of the instability uh, uh, in terms of geopolitical issues because of, uh, of uh, decisions that have been made lately. This is really spooking people. And I should also say that the market was at a very high level Sometimes when the market comes down, it's just not, it's not that unusual. It happens all the time. And there's really no need to panic. The only big problem but, is if uh, people start to, to, uh, to, to uh, 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 make things very political, that can create problems for the economy in a way that's really unnecessary. In fairness, though, to the president, he's not the only one, by the way, who is critical of, of the Fed, saying that they don't get it. They're looking at the wrong signs on the economy. They're not communicating well enough. You had Powell last Wednesday and then a Williams interview later in the week, seemingly either clarifying, walking back. You can characterize it however you want. But is the president necessarily wrong that the Fed should stop raising rates, given where the economy seems to be going? No, but it can actually go either way. I think what really is critical right now is the Fed has really shifted its, its policy framework, where it used to be talking about dates and talking about being very gradual, and every two meetings the federal funds rate was going up. We're now in a situation where really what happens in the future is really very uncertainty. uncertain. It's no longer clear how much more the Fed has to raise rates, and the Fed has to be data dependent, and that's exactly what it's been doing. It has to watch the market. So some of this issue is just we're in a more difficult situation evaluating what to do. And in that sense, uh, the Fed has been right to say we're not actually exactly sure what we're going to do. People love certainty, but there are times if you're certain and you're wrong, that's really bad. It's much better to be honest and say we're not exactly sure what we're going to be doing, and that's where we are right now. Fred, uh, on Wednesday, uh, Powell talked about the, the real variable being rates and not the balance sheet runoff. And he cited Yellen's stance on that from the, the prior, her prior tenure. Uh, but what's the likelihood that we do when we move into an environment where we walk into every meeting with two variables, and that would be rates and the balance sheet? I think the key to understand is that the balance sheet is a technical issue. And the Fed, I think, rightfully has been trying to make it very boring, that they're basically uh, 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 letting the balance sheet run off, uh, the, the, these bonds run off, so that in fact the balance sheet is shrinking at a very steady rate. I think that's exactly the right thing to do. And that their view is, and I think a correct one, that the main p policy tool that they need to be using right now is the federal funds rate. And talking about where that should be heading and in fact making decisions about where it should be. Uh, the uh, 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 getting involved in terms of thinking about uh, uh, what we need to do with the balance sheet right now is an important factor in terms of conducting monetary policy. It's just not the way to go. That could change, by the way, if in fact the economy went into a deep dive and then they might have to think about using the balance sheet again as a tool. But that's not the case right now and it's not something that, uh, that, th that is in the foreseeable future, at least at this juncture. But, but part of the problem with that, Fred, is that Powell uses the word autopilot that sort of set everybody into a little bit of a tizzy about, well, that says inflexible to some respects. Williams also walking that back a little bit. So I, I think the key is that as long as the situation is a normal one, uh, where the economy, you know, that uh, it may be uh, either growing more strongly or growing less strongly, then you want to use the right tool for the job. And that right tool at this juncture is, in fact, the federal funds rate. I don't think the Fed's saying that they would never use the balance sheet tool if, in fact, it was needed. Uh, in fact, it's now a, a part of the toolkit that the Federal Reserve has, and it was used very extensively during the financial crisis. But we're not in a situation where the economy is in trouble. The economy basically is doing very well, and inflation is basically uh, also doing very well. So that's not the time where you need to actually start fiddling around with extra, extra uh, jiggling extra dials when, in fact, they're not needing. That would just add to confusion. 
So I think that the Fed has been absolutely right to downplay the use of this tool at this juncture, but it doesn't mean that they're going to be inflexible if, in fact, it's needed. F finally, Fred, uh, really quick, um, asset prices, we know the percentage of American households who own stock, but what happens to the wealth effect to consumption if asset prices continue or even maintain this decline? So clearly the, the stock market uh, has an important impact on the economy that uh, if you, in fact, have the stock market decline, it means that, in fact, people have less resources to spend, and that does affect consumer spending. It also makes it more costly to finance investments, so that affects uh, uh, things as well and can actually be something that, that actually uh, uh, weakens the economy. What really is a bigger danger is if, in fact, there's uh, financial instability throughout the world. Uh, and I think that's not really where we are right now. Uh, and, indeed, uh, 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 the banking system is quite healthy, uh, I'm not sure that it, it helped for the Treasury Secretary to, uh, uh, to basically say everything's great because uh, sometimes when Treasury Secretaries say that, that's when, in fact, we start worrying that things are bad. I don't think that's the current situation. We're actually in a very solid situation right now. And, in fact, I think the bigger problem is just what's going on in the outside world, some of which is pretty, uh, pretty wild and crazy.